Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Before we get into things, got a few things to plug. The first of which is Opera House. Tickets are on sale for my July shows in the Opera House. We had 1st and 2nd of July on sale. They're basically away. We've also got the 30th and the 31st of June, which is Wednesday and Thursday. But they, we'll put the link in the description. Well, we're done. Cheers, you're a nice guy. The link will be in the description for that. Also, Patreon, patreon.com slash TV Me Podcast. We do the bonus episode on a Monday, live stream episode on a Friday. There's a few stand up hour long things on there from the last few months as well. So you can check that out, patreon.com slash TV Me Podcast. We are, of course, sponsored by Thompson's Tea. Some people would say that that's a tea company from somewhere like Delhi, but they're not. Even my guest today might have thought that. You know, Punjab, Dan, don't rattle your keys, please. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> You're rattling paper and keys? No one can hear that. All oh, right, okay. No one can hear that. So pretend it didn't happen. Thompson's Tea. These are these are the boys behind Punjana. They love it. They love it. It's undoubted that they love it. And we love it as well because it's Northern Ireland's number one selling tea. They're making in Belfast. They've been making tea in Belfast since the 1800s. And that's complete. That's actual fact. And in like, like Game of Thrones time, they were these boys were making tea. I don't know how it started off, but they were doing it. You know whether they were just putting like a few leaves in a sock and selling that up at Nuts Corner. I don't know how it started, but I know now that you can't go into a centre without seeing Punjana, without seeing Thompson's tea. And uh, where do people start sending me pictures of them just drink, just drinking tea in their house and saying? Made it's Punjana. <laughs> okay, it's also like too too personal of a photo, you know. I can see I can see your reflection and you're not wearing any bottoms. But what we're saying is just keep drinking Punjana. They make all different kinds of tea. They've got decaf, they've got breakfast, and it's a good time. We're also sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, the, the folks over at manscaped.com. They haven't been going since the eighteen hundreds, because you know back then, you know, ma- male grooming was not top priority. You know, the top priority was not getting shot with a, you know, arrow in the eye by by someone on top of a Fort Cullis. And I only know that word because I did a tour of Carrick Fergus Castle when I was younger. And I remember the guy saying, does anyone want to lower the Fort Cullis? And I said, yeah. He didn't let you in the end, but it was just, I hate that guy. But, um, but yeah, men's below the belt grooming. Look, 2021, we're moving into 2022. You've got to move in with a clean cut. What are you, why, why are you, why are you, why are you uh, giggling? What are you saying? Port Yeah, Port Cullis, But this, that's why this guy got sacked from Carrick Fergus Castle because he was saying Fort Cullis. He didn't, he didn't even work there. That's the thing. Guy, <laughs> guy just escaped from McGalbury that day and started giving on official tours. Port Cullis. I'm so fucking sorry that I said Fort Cullis. <laughs> you medieval nerds. Uh, what? Manscaped. One of the pubes, basically, is what we're talking about. That guy probably didn't have a great situation down there, but you can. You go to manscaped.com. They've got the, the best in men's below the belt grooming products. They've got the lawnmower 4.0 wireless charging technology. Dan, is that right? Is that developed in conjunction with NASA? Not officially. Not officially, but that is science type stuff. Uh, this is a great Christmas gift for someone. It's brilliant. It, if you're traveling, this will have come out after Christmas. Yeah, but it, it could, you know, Christmas 2022. You want to get in there early? You want to get a gift for someone? Manscaped.com. They've got men's, uh, you know, cologne. They've got ball wipes, ball deodorant, ball toner, all this sort of stuff. And they've got packages. Great gifts, great presents for yourself. Manscaped.com. Use the code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Links in the descriptions. And they've, there's also a thing in it called anti-snag technology. So don't uh, don't snag your bag, you know. Speaking of bags, punch bags. <laughs> My guest today is um, someone we've been, been hoping to get in the podcast for a long time. We've got him. It's a big moment. I'm looking forward to this. My guest is Carl Frampton. How you doing, man? We don't have any, we don't have anyone in here to applaud, but but yeah, I'm good. You? I'm okay. Yes. Good. First things first. I made you a cup of tea here. Yeah like don't say it's better than it is just be honest out of 10 no it's a good cup um 
Yeah, I like it. You asked me did I like it strong or weak, and somewhere in the middle. Right. That's perfect consistency. Tastes nice. I like it. Yeah. Do like it. Is it Punjana? It's it's Punjana. Thompson Tino Lawrence number one selling tea. Cheers. Um but yeah, no, I'm glad you like it. It is you, good, genuinely a good cup. Are you a big are you a big tea drinker? Yeah, I like tea. I had the I had the I used to drink it with milk and two sugars, and then obviously sugars in your tea when you're a boxer. I know. Making weight aren't very good. Tell me about it. So, uh, I've t- I taught myself to be able to drink it without sugar. It took me a while because it was stinking at the start. <laughs> but now I couldn't have a cup of tea with sugar. I like so, the way you're like. I taught myself like yeah. like it was a big thing. <laughs> Just trained myself. Yeah, it was it was disgusting at the start, but, but now that's the only way I have it. But we had Paddy Barnes on recently, and he he said he takes about four sugars yeah, now. At when least he four. he fought, he used to take eight. But he wasn't a very good fighter, was he? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he, I, I don't know. You know, I, I always thought you two were really good mates, but he's, I think he's trying to get, I think he's trying to get a fight sorted. I think he's trying he's to, he's trying to stir this. it up. I watched it. I watched the episode with him and Sean, and um, it's kind of mentioned about doing a charity MMA, and I went, oh, I'd love to do that because yeah. he was training. He was doing a bit of MMA training after he retired just for fitness, um, and this was mentioned. I thought, why not? I think we could raise a few quid for a charity, sell a few tickets. It would be good crack as well. I'd definitely win. And he he kind of agreed to it, but then he says, well, yeah, we'll do it, but no elbows, no knees, no... Like, well, it's not really MMA then, is it? What, yeah. what is it? It's a cuddle. Yeah. So <laughs> um, he doesn't seem as keen now, but then on the show last week, he seemed like he was... Oh, why? Well, well, I think that's probably because he had Sean with him as well. Bit of bravado. Was, I don't, I, could you kick him in the head? If it came um, to him? Charity? Yeah. Yeah? Full force? I, well, I don't know. I don't know. Not if he's like lying out, you know, I'll let the referee <laughs> jump in. I wouldn't <laughs> kick him in the head if he's already knocked out. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I would, like it's like sparring and stuff. I sparred Paddy. Although we're mates. You'd, you'd feel great to chin him in yeah. the gym. And likewise, <laughs> he would say the same about about me. So. Yeah. But he was like, uh, I think he, he is really trying to... Because you know, like, people like Jake Paul, the, when they the try and start a beef, they're really, like... Like, he was getting personal. He Was he? He, what, he called you. No, I don't know what he called me, eh? Right? Um, fat family man. The fat family man, yeah. Like, that's got to... That's got to hurt. Doesn't even. From that's, him? That's what I am. Have you seen the shape of him, <laughs> but It's like... Yeah, he's... He, he, Sean called him a barrel. That's the like perfect description. Just yeah. a wee, you can see his wee belly sticking out. You can see mine a wee bit there. I'd carry it all down there. But if you wore a big enough t-shirt, you'd really see this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look, I'd, I'd like to see the fight. Maybe we could do a Patreon episode here. I could referee. Yeah. You, you, you beat him, yeah? Yeah, I would beat him, I. I would definitely. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I would... I would In the I first? Would, yeah. <laughs> I just think I'd be... I genuinely believe I'd be too strong for him. Yeah. And just too vicious as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to say it. We, uh, two people in this room have been in your house before. Me and, me and Mike have been in your house to shoot a video. And um, I I was saying after, people were like, what was the house like? And I, I, I think, you know you're doing well when a, a pheasant walked past. <laughs> we were just sitting in your living room and some night a quarter of my eye, I was like, what the hell is that? And a pheasant dandered past, yeah. and you didn't even look twice at it. <laughs> you said that that'll happen. <laughs> Excuse the pheasants, yeah. No, that was a while ago. I, yeah, um, we I also thought... had to refuel diesel going up the driveway no. four times. <laughs> Longest driveway I've ever seen in my life. It was a yeah. That was I don't live in that house anymore. Right. Um, couldn't afford it. Now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've moved a bit closer to Belfast. Just um, did you bring the pheasants? There's a few pheasants. We actually live close to a pub called the Pheasant. <laughs> right. So you quite often see pheasants just strolling around. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you, uh, that's we're not there anymore. You wouldn't have had pheasants back in Tiger's Bay back in the no, day, no? No, pheasants. A few rats and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> the size of pheasants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always liked to exaggerate the size of a rat all the time. Oh, the size of a cat. <laughs> Was it really? I don't think it was. I can't deal. See rats, mice. I, I can't deal with that at all. My my dad gets. We even talk about rats. He he hates it. Doesn't like it. Yeah. Um, no, the thought of no. I can't. I can't. I can't deal yeah. with that at all. Um, 
lo- loads on it, loads on a chat to you about um, from like getting into boxing, what you've been doing since boxing, the highs and lows of fighting, like loads and loads of stuff. But the main thing I want to address is you and a load of load of other boxers sort of t- like a lot of people took up sea swimming during <laughs> during lockdown. Yeah, like everybody got into it, and yeah, you and guys like Ryan Burnett, Patty, Sean. Lo- loads of fellas were going out sea swimming. I-, I saw the first few photos of these during during lockdown. I was looking at it on my phone. You know, when you could go out and about a bit, I thought that's class. What boys are getting out and probably good to have that camaraderie again. You know, getting out of your comfort zone, doing something early in the morning. And I was like, I wonder where they do it. And then <laughs> I started to realize more and more. I was like, I, I recognize that up here. And then I realized you were doing it in Hollywood. Had no one said to you like. Hollywood is the best place in Northern Ireland, like no doubt, like the best place, cleanest place. We got free three G, free three G. Did I say that right? Yeah. The town has free three G. How's that? Who pays for that? Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> no one's concerned about that. We're probably all paying for it, but it's fine. We got it. But the, the that's the thing. The, the water here is is the worst because the, of the the docks in Belfast. All chemicals being rats like the size of rats the size of dogs. The sewage plant for all Belfast is like half a mile down from where you were swimming. And I'm looking at video of some of the like the best boxers of all time from here. Some <laughs> the elite boxing talent bobbing into the water and I'm like, they're never gonna be able to fight again, ever. Someone told us about it and we didn't believe it. Yeah, he was saying then, someone told them about it and they couldn't quite believe it. <laughs> I'm really sorry, that's my butler. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we thought he was full of nonsense. And then I met you on a flight on the way back from, I think, London. London, London yeah. And um, you told me. I was dead here. I was like, please, yeah, we have, please we don't. We haven't been back since. Don't. We haven't been back since. That was, that was my... F- we, had, we had an incident with a local resident down there who... Um, we were all standing on the pier big squad of us right maybe 10 and we're respectful when we come down and the areas like that we don't want to make too much noise because you're there what first thing and like yeah we're there for sunrise usually which depending on the time of year it was probably about half six at this time um so we, we're all we're all on the pier and this guy we're about to jump in a guy comes out of his house with his house coat on you're dressing it hi <laughs> <laughs> yeah whatever you yeah, want to call house it co- house coat you know the house coat like a dressing gown right you call it a house coat um he comes walking down and think oh fuck fair play your man straight out of his door wants to jump in and then he shouted at us for being noisy and right. we weren't noisy yeah and there was a few headers with us d mccomb who was mentioned last oh, and then la- is that sean's brother sean's brother so he was on telling us about the fact that his brother had been thrown out of two of his oh, fights He's a nut. He's a great guy, but he's just screw loose, yeah. absolute screw loose. So these are, and we're all kind of standing there, and um, I, I didn't want to be involved and seem to be annoying residents, you know. And Carl Frampton's down here annoying the people of Hollywood. <laughs> so he started getting a bit aggressive, and the guy, the local, the local, right? And he was so he he's did, out in his dressing out in his dressing gown, gown, being aggressive, but sounded like a yuppie yuppie voice so people started giving him a bit of grief back and <laughs> yeah. i just turned around because he, he, he got us he got us he says we're being too noisy we've woke him up i think i don't think we woke him up i think that he just likes to complain who are these guys coming down here jumping into my water <laughs> um i think he might have had an argument with his wife and he was on the sofa or something and he's seen the cars <laughs> pulling up um but he started to get aggressive and then he got the phone out like he was going to record us and report it to the police and I just turned my back and uh, Big D McComb just says to him, if you don't fuck off back in their house, I'm going to fuck you in that water. <laughs> <laughs> and he kindly turned and went. <laughs> he goes, no, it's only coming out to, it's only coming out to, 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 to watch your technique here. It was, it was, there was no need for it. It was just, yeah. he was a job's worth. Um, would, and they would have thrown him in. 
yeah, I, yeah. Or fucked him in. Yeah, yeah. That's, There's a difference between yeah, throwing yeah. someone and fucking them no, in. No, he would have 100%. He, I was getting a bit worried that the guy was going to get three in. <laughs> Don't go out to like a load of boxers, a mad day, yeah. and start giving shit in your dressing gown. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's no need for it. There was no... I think that... I remember him thinking... Like, so the pier is actually quite a bit... There's maybe... 20 or 30 yards so we're a good bit away from the yeah, houses yeah, yeah. And he was talking about the noise I think the waves were making more noise than us <laughs> he, just, he just wanted to act mad I think he yeah. showing off in front of his but wife that, to get in the good books but that's a yuppie move yeah. to go out to 10 lad. just they don't give a fuck yeah. just put because most normal people would, would see that and go even if you were being noisy you go I'm not going to 10 fellas yeah you know, in the, in in uh, in in the middle of the morning, to tell them to keep a noise down. Yeah, but th- that's yeah, that's a Hollywood attitude. That of, was the attitude. No, I will, I will go out to them. Yeah, I will go out to them. Yeah, and he he never came back out. No, he never came back. We went down a few times after that, <laughs> right. and he was there was no sign of him, and <laughs> probably his own fault for making the yeah. kind of scene that he did. But yeah, every time we went down after it, we weren't so quiet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think D wanted him out again. High five, yeah. <laughs> bits and pieces. D wanted him out, but he uh, he never came back out. Have you kept that up? The the, the jumping. I haven't done it in a while. There's some boys still doing it. There there were so we went from about twelve people to now like two or three now. Right. Um, but we've moved. We're we're not jumping into this the toxic Sush. waste anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we're down uh, down at Brompton. Oh, but uh, like Helen's Bay direction. Yeah, yeah. It's better. It's be- that's much better. better. It's lovely. It's really nice down there. Better water. Did you find when you were doing that, it was like after retiring from boxing that, not that it was like being back in a training camp running, but it was like getting up at the same time. Yeah. Going with a load of guys. Really enjoyed it. Genuinely, really enjoyed it. I don't. Know, it was actually Stevie Ward who suggested it to me, and then he never went once with us. <laughs> right. Um, and then I started going with a couple and then it just kind of snowballed and there was loads of people in but i i enjoyed doing it it's too cold now yeah it's too cold to do it um i because i i didn't buy into it and then me and my mate tony went to do it and i think it was about october sort of time mm. went into the sea and i was it was painful we were right. standing in the water for about 10 minutes it was painful i was going to get out this was after about two minutes i was like i this is too sore i'm getting mm. out and i said just stick with it once I started moving about, yeah, you're right. I hit this point where it was freezing outside and it was dark, but I started to feel like warm. Yeah, not not just like all right. I felt warm and it was nice. Did you piss yourself? Yeah, before I went down <laughs> to the beach, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then I was moving about. It was lovely. No, it, it, nice. I think it's the first kind of minute and a half, two minutes is actually pretty difficult. But yeah. once you're in there, you I feel like you could stay in for half an hour. Yeah, if have, you wanted. Have you taken any other up any other hobbies or interests since boxing? Anything out of the ordinary? Nah. No pottery, anything like that. Nothing, no pottery, no, not nothing else. Do you do you feel like are you happy enough in retirement, or do you think you need some some to replace? No, that? I I was I I like doing not a lot, right, and just chilling out. Is um, that common, or do you think most boxers like with such a routine don't know, need there, something to? There, I think I don't know. There's guys that love fighting, like genuinely just love to fight and love to be. I wasn't one of them people, and I was looking out. I was looking out of boxing for the last couple of years, to be honest. Um, I probably stayed in it a bit longer than I should have, but I was I was looking forward to retiring and just just chilling out, like really. Yeah. And, cause, um, cause people say like that's dangerous, though, isn't it? If 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 you're almost if you're looking out or if you already have one. Eye. Yeah. Well, so it wasn't like I, I I always give full effort in training camps in preparation for fights, but. In my head, going into that Jamel Herring fight, it was like, after the Warrington fight, I was thinking about retiring. And then I thought, look, I'll stay in um, MTK and top rank. Top rank approached me in after the Warrington fight, gave me this unbelievable deal. Um, MTK and top rank together with Frank Warren says he can get me a world title shot at Super Featherweight. So I said to myself, I'll stay in and have a crack. And hopefully I wanted to become a three-bit world champion. And it just, just didn't happen. The, do you think it made a difference because those that that herring fight was behind closed doors? Would that have yeah. made it? Would that have made any difference? Yeah, he was in the same atmosphere, wasn't yeah. he? So, um, but some people like some boxers like it. I know it's a bit of an excuse, though, isn't it? When you yeah. you hear people talking about the atmosphere, that's why I lost. But um, I I don't I don't see it like that. It's it's it is definitely better to box in a in a raucous atmosphere when it's quiet. It's 
It's just grim. Do I've done stand virtual stand up, now it's really? a bit different than that. No one's trying to knock the fuck out of me, yeah. but uh, it is totally. Some people I know like enjoy it. You know, mm. like stream gigs where you're just doing it to the camera. Yeah, I, I definitely. How do you gauge your rea- You can't gauge your reaction of. You can't, but what'll happen is if you do it on Zoom, every once in a while it'll cut the people watching it, right. and you'll it always goes to the wrong person. It's always <laughs> some guy who's focused on some. Say it's like a corporate thing for a yeah. business. Some people are like you know watching the screen laughing a bit. For me, it always cuts to some fella who's like he's texting and he doesn't know the screens on him or he's muted it and he's just like, you know, playing. You can see he's got a controller and he's playing Warzone or something like that. But you know, you can't gauge it at all. Yeah, that's that's grim, isn't it? Did you did you have a plan? Like once you retired, did you have a plan for what you want to do? Or are you just very much like see what happens? No, well, so I was doing um I was already doing bits and pieces of punditry towards the end of my career, so I was hopeful that I was going to step into that um, and do it a little bit more often. But I was offered a contract for from BT Sport for two years, um, which I'm currently in the middle of. I'm really enjoying it. Um, you're really, you're really good at punditry. I like it. I, I genuinely like it, and I, I think it's easy because you, I, I just say what I see. Yeah, that's that's how easy it is, and I annoy some people sometimes and. I'm not trying to be like a Roy Keane or anything like that. Like a bit of a diluted version of Roy Keane. I like to be honest. Yeah. Roy Keane likes to try and wind people up and annoy them. Yeah. But yeah. I just I just try to be honest as yeah. I can. Did you have to like with with punditry, is there are you ever watching a fight or, or at a at a venue going, Fuck, I'd love to be in there, or are you delighted that you're not? No, I I'm delighted that I'm not. I'm not I never think of it really like that, but I never I never go to a big event and think I'd love to be fighting. Um, I'm just happy to be still involved with boxing without having to do any any of the hard work, really. What What do you miss about it? Um, the gym, the boys, the camaraderie in the gym, the boys in, in the gym in Manchester. We had like it was great crack. It was loads of characters, all similar personalities, all with the same kind of dreams and aspirations, and pushing each other and training hard. But at that gym at the end of my career was unbelievable yeah i i always like i always think if i was to go pro with boxing i think i i don't think i'd like to do the gym stuff i think no. i would just do the fights just fight i don't think i'd have the camp because i look at that as an advantage i'd see my opponent and go this fella's come off the back of what two two three month camp yeah he's knocked his pan in every day he's probably sleep deprived he's been away from home i i'd be at home yeah the whole time home cooked meals, not training, sitting in, plenty of sleep. Mm. And then I think by the time the fight come around, I'd just be really rested and ready for it. Like a dog ready to be let off the leash. Yeah. Um that there do you know what? There's a there's do you a think wee, I should go for there's it. A wee, <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. There's <laughs> yeah. do you know what? It wouldn't be uh, literally that's the thing with professional boxing. You don't have to be that good to be professional. Look at Paddy Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's there's guys who uh, who aren't very good. The journeymen, they call them. There's some journeymen who are actually quite good. Yeah, and I know the way around the ring. But to be a professional footballer, you have to be good, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Boxer Freddie Flintoff was a professional boxer for one fight. Yeah, because you, know you see those guys, and you know, yeah, like journeymen. You see some fella. Who's had eighty one fights and he's he's lost them all. Yeah. That must be a do you think that do you think they think of it as it's actually a really good life? I mean I'm I, not really good at boxing, but I'm getting paid. No, I think I think that some of them go into it the wrong so some of them kind of turn into journeymen when they don't want to. So they have a career and they get a few wins at the start and then a few losses. Someone says to him, Look, why don't you just go on the road and become a journeyman? You'll get a grand a fight, you'll fight every week. And <sighs> And they've got an hour job as well. They don't really train. They just turn up, do four rounders, That's possibly a be. six rounder. I'm going to be a journeyman. Yeah, you have to be. A, yeah, you can do it. See, I, 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 like you say, like, you know, you don't have to be that good, but I, w- I would just do it all different. Some of them are better. Some of the journeymen are better than like these prospects. So everybody that gets involved in boxing, they have these big dreams. I'm going to be a world champion when realistically, there's probably not a lot of chance that that's going to happen. But journeymen... The art of being a good journeyman is not getting knocked out because if you get knocked out, you can't. You're suspended for a month, twenty eight days. Right, right. So you can't box next week. So they cover up and they don't get hit that clean, and 
they don't try to win. Yeah. But they, they just they know their way around the ring, not to get not that's to a, get you. That's like a guy who Paddy did fight. Remember in the Titanic Exhibition Center, the guy who just got him in a farm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. was he just ro- doing things like that just so he wouldn't potentially get punched? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't know what happened with the lift. That was funny. <laughs> that was Paddy's debut, I think. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Because it was there was such a big build up. Yeah. And then in the fight, I remember just one of those ones thing. I went to bed and then woke up and was reading about the fight. And Paddy was like, oh, raging, you know, so annoyed. And I was like, he lo- must have lost. And yeah. it's like, no, he didn't lose. But the fella, like, was running about the ring and then got Paddy in a fireman's lift <laughs> and ran about with him. And Paddy was raging, <laughs> as you the, would be. Yeah, you would be. It's like, it's mad, isn't it? Like, it's pretty serious boxing, like, but yeah. everything Paddy does <laughs> turns into a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Paddy said the guy after the fight just, like, left with his gear on. Like, yeah. didn't get a shower, didn't, like... Just like went into the out on I don't know here. if that guy, I think that guy's Bulgarian. I think he's yeah. just in Belfast still somewhere, just <laughs> yeah, knocking about in a pair of Everlast shorts. They get, a, they get a lot of them in. The foreign journeymen, I don't want to sound racist, but the foreign journeymen aren't as good as the British journeyman. Right. You knock out a foreigner easier than a, a British journeyman. Right. Why is that? I don't know because the thing uh, they don't. I don't know. There's maybe more. They, they try to win the foreigners. They try to throw back and stuff. Right, right. And they're not very good. Yeah. The kind of British Irish journeyman will just cover up, and they know they're not going to win. Right. So they'll just try not to get knocked out. It's really hard to knock someone out who's being really negative. Right. Like right. if you're just not trying to win a fight, it's actually harder to knock someone like that out than someone who's yeah winging at you. I think my te- I think I would just try. Technique wise, to really change it, because like say 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 I was going to fight, a lot of it like I don't want to criticize boxers, a lot of it is you know jab jab you know hook. What about jab 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 hook something like that like like a well there's you know, different so combinations one two, one two three there's loads I'd be of different one, combinations one two one two one two one two you know yeah I that I would I think I would just do that a little bit different yeah and I'd offer my chin out a lot want see some people do it put their chin out as a like yeah try and hit the chin yeah. And then they don't hit it. Yeah. And then you can counter. Yep. But a one two one two one two. Yep. Is actually just called six shots. So it's you don't say one two one two one two. No, I say someone it on the pad it. says six. You throw one two three four five six. You don't count in twos. Just a gem. I came up in with it. <laughs> with it. I came up in. Uh, over with Freddie Roach, so we would he would have he would have said, but that's just Freddie Roach. Like he would have told us. To. There is some trainers in fairness, and it baffles me. I don't I don't understand what they're saying. But the numbers for jab would be one, right. a right hand would be two, a left hook would be three, a right hook would be four. So they're like <laughs> two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> but their fighter understands what what they're doing. I is is there ba- is it <laughs> genuine question? Is there bad trainers? Oh, uh, there's more but bad like trainers. But like at a high than, level? More bad trainers than good trainers. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, yeah, I'd say there's a handful of good trainers in the UK. There's a lot of guys who, again, this is boxing, you know, you, any fucking dickhead can literally become a trainer these days. You go and do a, a course for a couple of hours and yeah. you're a professional boxing trainer. Yeah, and you don't need to have a background in boxing. Nah, not really. Boxing. Not really. Well, like as a fighter. Yeah, there's a lot, well, there's a lot of like PTs involved now, and PTs yeah. are like boxing coaches. Yeah, um, I'd say there's a handful of good trainers in in the UK. There's no like, there's no like teachers anymore. People right. with wisdom and you know Gus Gus D'Amato and 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 Dundee and Freddie Roach even and um, there's no one teaching. They're all just good pod men they look good it yeah. looks nice to be able to catch a pods there's plenty of them about but what is, well has there been a, I asked this question to Paddy and Sean has there been anything during a fight that's like ever caught your eye or distracted you anything that's gone on whether it was in the ring or in the arena outside the ring um, that's like broke your adrenaline for a second no any famous so. face in the audience where you've There's caught them and gone? Um, Day Lewis sense. was that one of my fights. Who? Day Lewis, Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, Nelson Hall. Yeah, one of my early fights. Class. He came up from I think he's a house in Wexford or Waterford or somewhere, mm-hmm. and he came up on his Harley, on his own, arrived into Europa, went to a crime bar on his own, in his leathers. Yeah. Cool dude. Like, oh, I always the coolest. And then watch the fight. 
Did got you a know? Photograph did you find out him? after? No, I knew he was coming, but I got a photograph with him in uh, in the Europa, and I don't know where to, I can't find it again. My phone. Shit, I'm raging about that. That's very cool. Yeah, he's a nice guy, really nice guy, and he knows boxing as well. Yeah. Uh, that it, I mean, I was more thinking like local, so like, like Jimmy Nesbitt. He's been there. Nesbitt's going to the podcast. Yes, that'll be that'll be a good moment. That would be good. I'll, I'll look forward to that. Uh, yeah, Daniel, that would be. I can get very distracted by seeing certain people at a gig, it, 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 but like the slightest thing is someone I used to go to school with, mm. and then I'm doing the gig, but in my head I'm going, I wonder what he does now yeah. as a job. Well, before the Warrington fight, not so not during the fight, but before it, in the crowd was. There were a few faces at that one, but Steve McManaman, you were there. Yeah, I was one of them. Steve, I didn't want to put you off. I Steve, wore a hat. <laughs> Steve McManaman was there. Right. And I remember thinking, there's fucking Steve McManaman. Yeah. I haven't seen him in ages. He yeah. hadn't been on TV in a while or yeah. anything. <laughs> What's he up to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't put me off, but I just I, I had a nice feeling about Steve being there. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that was something you needed for every fight going forward. Yeah. Steve McManaman's got to be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a big boxing fan, apparently. I met him after it, after it, doing something for BT, and um, nice guy. Did you ever have, like, to, like maybe near the start of your career when it would have been, like, a bigger deal probably for you? Imagine you get used to it. Was there ever anyone, like the Daniel Day-Lewis thing, was there anyone who ever, like, reached out, even on Twitter or anything like that, just to say they were a big fan, or... I can't really remember. Um, I don't know. Probably not, because you would remember something like that, wouldn't yeah. you? Or a big Twitter follower or anything like that? Um, you know, big is... Twitter follower, no. Do you know who? Roberto Duran follows Paddy Barnes' wife, but not Paddy Barnes. <laughs> or me. I like, um, I like that. That's that good. annoys me a bit. Yeah, that's good. Um, but a few decent followers, I suppose, on Twitter. It's always nice when you get a good follower. Oh, why? Sometimes you get the blue tick guys and you don't know who they are. Hey, you have a fucking blue yeah, tick? Yeah, you, you follow 250,000 people. Yeah. Followed by 250,000 yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, guys, guys like, join my mentorship program. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, you know, no, absolutely not. Yeah. There, yeah, there, there, there's weird accounts like that, but I think definitely there was a... I remember when I started, like, putting stuff online, like comedy online, you would get a follower where you... Well, well you probably back in the day, follow me would have been, like... A, b- a big day like not anymore. you definitely would have no not now but <laughs> no i joking you would but you would like you follow me i would that would that, that's a group chat screenshot like oh yeah yeah 100%. No, i've got i've got a few of them you got a few you would put in the group chat like i've got a uh, big flintoff follows me he's a big yeah. name yeah a few footballers harry redknapp oh why harry redknapp texts me before the jamel harry fight and graham soonis right so i have their numbers yeah that's a big deal i'm better than having a follow Having someone's phone number. Having their number, yeah. Jimmy Dornan's number, got him. Yeah. You probably got that. Tell yeah. you a story about Jimmy Dornan. Yeah. So that house that you were talking about at the start with the pheasants yeah. in Banbridge, I uh, I bumped into him and I'd just moved there, right? And I'd bumped into him in London when I was training. He was just walking down the King's Road um, on a nice summer's day. Everybody's leaving him alone. Um, and I asked him, I stopped and we were talking to each other and I said like How many years ago? What, what, ten? Seven. Right. Um, so I stopped <laughs> stopped him in the street. We're having a good chat. No one came near him for a good ten or fifteen minutes. And I said, Do you not get do you not get loads of like grief being in London? He said, No, London's okay, but when I go back home to Belfast, yeah. it's a different it's story. Me. Like oh. <laughs> <laughs> So he gets a lot more attention when he's in Belfast. Um and I said to him, now, bear in mind, I just moved to Bombridge this time. But I'd said to him, Belfast is all right for me. I feel like everybody knows me. But when I'm in the wee towns, like Bombridge and all, you know, I do get hassled. And he says to me, what would you be doing this shithole like Bombridge? <laughs> 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 and I just agree. No, I don't know. Fucking Bombridge. Not come back. But I just bought a house there like two months before. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I, you would have got real defensive. I've fuck, I've pheasants and all, so I'm <laughs> sorry, a shithole. If, if I've got twenty pheasants, I, I agree that it was a shithole, but I, I, it's not a shithole. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice place. I would, I would, a hundred percent be with you. I would have just agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, I remember, I was, I was wounded. <laughs> yeah. I was wounded for ages. 
he just after this goes out to town council are going to take back that advertising collab we're going to do with him as well <laughs> no that was uh that was actually good but i'll give you this for bum bridge very good cafe in it um as you drive in i don't know what end i'm thinking here it's on the right it's got two levels to it and it's a cafe coffee shop kind of thing i've had a few really good lunches in there really I'm trying to think what end. Is it facing facing facing? Is it facing the downshire, the white hotel bar restaurant? It's that end. Yeah, that so there's a cafe across the road. It's on the corner. Yeah, on the corner. I know the cafe you're talking about. I've been yeah. out once or twice, but the downshire across the road from it. Yeah. The unreal. Food. What about the boulevard type place? Uh, see to me. Not in that. We're not ready for that here. No, I, we're not ready for that experience. We're no. like our our shops like bang in the town. Yeah, I'm walking about. We don't want to. It's an know, American, it's a American thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Go to the mall. Yeah, no one has time to do that. Like yeah. I'm just trying not to. No, I always get people. When, even at my fights, they all used to come over when I fought in America. And the the big thing they wanted to do was go to the outlets. Yeah, yeah. They love an outlet. Yeah. And I just I didn't want. I'm not in that sort yeah. of shit. I went to I went to I went to one of your fights in Vegas, and it was such a good experience it was like it was brilliant yeah it was a brilliant time because every you, you bump into so many people from home in the day before the fight yeah on the day like everyone's wearing northern see, Ireland tops <laughs> see when the see when i have this vivid memory of when all the the northern ireland fans started arriving in yeah uh, for the fight against santa cruz in vegas and it was there was a few thousand and they'd all have their northern ireland tops on and i have this vivid memory of a wee fat ginger man don't know who he was <laughs> mid 40s early 50s maybe five foot four <laughs> similar height to me walking through the mgm lobby with two six foot plus black hookers on his arms <laughs> <laughs> and i just thought oh you are living the dream you, nev son. you never know they might they might not have been they might have just been into him yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> they might have just had a thing for we we fellas from here <laughs> <laughs> that was uh that was i remember wa walking through the mgm lobby on the way to the fight and uh, and it was like a football match everyone's walking together and um and i remember a woman i did stand up with this a woman like an OEO one playing the slots turned around to a fella in earshot of where i was and said, uh, why are you guys all wearing the soccer tops? And the, a guy <laughs> was raging and went, because we're going to the fucking boxing. <laughs> <laughs> and just, it was, I thought he was going to smack her. <laughs> She's just down there like this. But it was, it was brilliant. I uh, That day, it was my mate's birthday. We start drinking. I'm not a big drinker. But we start mm. drinking really early, like with breakfast and go out and we're on our way to the fight. And we're, then we're, we're got, had the shirt on, you know, dressed up a wee bit for it. And, uh, we we're on our way to the fight, and Ruth Gorman was doing interviews for UTV. Yeah, and we were on our way to the midday blitz, and uh, she she goes, "Oh, she goes, would you and your mate do an interview for this?" And we went, "Yeah, yeah." And it was about you know you and the fight and that sort of. And she was basically all she was looking at was, "Do you think he's gonna do it?" Yeah. And uh, we were standing on, you know, the way in Vegas there there's bridges all over the, yeah. so you can go from one side yeah. to the other. It was on a bridge, and it was. It was forty degrees, and we were standing there, and I had to lean against something because I could. I was ju just trying to keep my balance, and she said, "Well, he's, he's looking forward to the fight," and for some reason, I just got like a wee bit emotional about home, and I went, you know, I said, "Look, I think Carr's brilliant for home because he he brings both sides together," and and I once I started going on that thing, I just got like real deep into it, and at one point I remember. <laughs> My mate John took over talking and I remember looking at him but thinking I was watching him on TV and then going, no, I'm here. And you can see all this happen. So they put the footage out and then UTV sent, uh, they sent me the thing and uh, thank God all of it didn't go out because my face is I'd bright red to too. That. It was so bad. I'd love to see it. I, I like, could have walked with you to the fight. I never, I was meant to, so it's, I stay in the MGM. Right. And the, the fight was in the MGM but you can't just walk through it. Yeah. You're yeah. meant to get, oh shit. Right. You're meant to get picked up. Um, you're meant to get picked up at an an ag, like a an entrance or an exit and drove around the corner for your grand arrival to the fight. So I'm standing there with Christine and uh, Jake McGuigan. There's no car comes to pick me up. 
I had to run across. I think it was it was four lanes of traffic each way, eight <laughs> lanes of traffic with my backpack on. <laughs> Before I fought Santa Cruz, <laughs> right. that could have been minced before I got there. I remember just thinking, what a shit show. Like, why yeah. Why is there not a car here to pick me up? Not a big, you know, prima donna or anything, but, uh, but me, practically you needed you know, there. Yeah. I needed to be there. And then yeah. I get into the back entrance where you're not meant to go. Right. And there's a lady saying, what are you doing here? She didn't know who I was. I'm like, oh, I'm here to fight. And she went, you're in the wrong place. And I was like, <laughs> who are you and stuff? And I went, see the fucking guy on your lanyard. That's me. Just please let me in. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to have to walk back or run back over that road. <laughs> the amount, you had to pull out of the fight because you're just on the freeway. Yeah. The amount of times I've had to explain the door staff of venues, I am the guy. Mm. See all the everyone queued up. They're 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 coming to see this show. Yeah. You know, London guys it's like, well, I don't know you. I'm like, I know you. Don't, I don't ha- think you do know me, but I'm here to do the show. Happened to me at the the Warrington fight as well. I didn't have a wristband on, and <laughs> we're in like a little cage taped area at the back of the Manchester arena and guy knew who it was he says have you got your wristband I was like no um, you need to respond again and I said done the same like the lanyard mate that's me on your <laughs> lanyard he went yeah I know but you still need a wristband I'm like well do I need a, do I need a wristband <laughs> if you know it's me and I'm actually fighting tonight just let me fuck it in and he ended up wising up and letting me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a job's worth, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Part of me, part of me respects it a wee bit. I don't. I hate them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely hate them. Um, speaking of Christine, your wife is is definitely top five people on Twitter. Unbelievable. Yeah, she's very, very funny. So good. Yeah, she is, she's funny. She's a really funny girl. Yeah. Because I remember the when I first saw her on Twitter, it was like she would like she would put people down. Yeah. So anyone who was having a pop at her or you, yeah, you know, and you probably couldn't tweet a lot then, or you know, you're just you're in camps, so you're yeah. fighting, and you don't want to get into an argument with some fella from fucking Larn, yeah. you know, on the, or or England or wherever it was. But she was just so good at just. She was. She's brilliant. She's really good at. She doesn't do it as much now. Yeah. Um, well, she's done it. She's completed. She's it. done it. She's completed it. <laughs> yeah. right. But she, uh, and that's, I'm obviously on social media, but I'm not on it as much because. I don't want to be involved in arguing with dickheads, which yeah. happened quite often. Yeah. Um, but she was always defending me. Not that I needed her to defend me. You don't need your missus to defend you, but I liked it too. Yeah. yeah. You know, once you've done it, because she was always funny with it. Yeah. The um, It seemed like towards the end of your fighting career that you went through just like beyond bad luck, like yeah. in terms of injuries and things that, happened out of the blue and it seemed to me that it was like a it felt like a year it probably wasn't but it felt like a year where it was um opponent slips in the shower yeah can't fight uh you're in a hotel lobby wooden statue type thing falls hits your hand not not even it was like a it was hard it was like a not concrete but something similar to concrete this thing was pushed over and smashed my fucking hand that was a bad one and then you have the obviously the start of the legal dispute with Barry McGuigan when you were going through do you look back on that and think that was it terrible at the time or was it just one of those like oh don't laugh about it it'll cry nah um, the hand one when 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 I got my hand broke, when the thing, the ornament yeah. statue, I called it an ornament at the start, an ornament fell on me and it broke my hand. People, are, like, people are, you know, <laughs> yeah. imagine a wee fucking a wee, thing. A wee yeah. red breast. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I that break your hand. But it was a fucking pillar, like, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when that when that happened, I was really disappointed because I'd, I'd been in Philly for a month before it, which is where the fight was taking place. Um, yeah, it was a, fucking nightmare um the one where the kid fell in the shower was my last fight with mcguigans and going into that fight i i had it in my head i was there was too much stuff that i was unhappy with and i was leaving them after it so win lose or draw i was going i wanted to beat this guy and pack it in but even my dad who would never get involved and say much was kind of glad that that fight never happened because he just thought I wasn't in the right frame of mind and yeah. I could have got beat by a guy who was all right, but not not brilliant. Um, and then the court case stuff, that was just inevitable, really. That, that It was necessary, but 
it was a shame it had to happen, but it did have to happen. But I, I enjoyed the whole core process. It was fucking brilliant. Why, just getting the suit up every day? or the new suit every day, because it, obviously it was like media <laughs> attention and yeah. stuff. So it was on for quite a while. So yeah. I was like, yeah, show off the range of suits here. Yeah. We'll give Suter brother a mention because he's helped me out with the suits. Yeah. Um, Chris Suter. And I have uh, different suits. And then it got to a point where I'm at court so much, I'm having to change the trousers with a different jacket. Yeah. To yeah. make a, you know, to give the illusion of a different yeah. suit. Why well, was there a lot of people in the comments of, you know, article news articles being about it being like, he, he wore that before. <laughs> you no, know, you're probably overthinking I think, it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think there might have been one or two, but. Um, but do you think that because that, that was going on when you were still you're still fighting yeah yeah do, but do you think that had a negative no, effect at didn't, any point no because no didn't because I was um, I was I I was I can't say too much here you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, I don't yeah. Get just say whatever you're sued, comfortable with yeah. I think that um, I was just comfortable the whole way through the case I was just going in and being honest didn't have to tell any lies being cross-examined by their um, barrister, barrister um, McCollum was his name, Liam McCollum, um, big, like, six-foot-four guy, but just very aggressive. Every time he asked me a question, I'd answer it, and he'd just go, you're a liar, Frampton! <laughs> Mr. Frampton, you are lying! I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not. Is it Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> That's a that's a great move from Barry to just get the governor. In. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so he he would give me grief, just say I was lying all the time. Yeah. Um, so he he said something in the court in the court case, and I can't remember. But he I didn't know what he was talking. He asked me a question. I had no idea what he was talking about, and he had got the question wrong. So he apologized, and I says, "Who's a liar now?" And the judge shouted at me, <laughs> Mr. Frampton, show you, some respect. You don't wind up the Terminator. No, I didn't. And I didn't. And I didn't. So the judge shouted at me and I, and I kept apologizing. I really freaked out. Like, sorry, 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 sorry. Send sorry, father. Putty Barnes swore that I said, no, I was saying, sorry, judge. Putty Barnes swore I said, sorry, father. Sorry, father. But I d- it's like I calling a teacher mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. Do you think you'll ever, you know, being calm about it and looking back, it, it didn't phase you because, you know, you were you were being honest, but do you think you'll ever look back in the future differently on it and go, actually, that was a shame, or you think you'll just always feel the same? No, way? I just always feel the same. Um, yeah, it, it's, it is a, it's a shame that it happened, I, I yeah. feel like that, but um, it just, it did. It's, well, it's going to be a good few chapters in the book. It's coming out next year. Oh, yeah. So um, that'll be good. And people think I can't really say too much about about the court case and about the settlement and all that, but anything that was said in court can be brought up again. How much? Everything that was said <laughs> no, in no. court. No, no. Oh, well, right, right, right. <laughs> Every, <laughs> everything can be said. Um, and the thing is, people, it wasn't being reported properly by the media, I don't think. I remember big things happening in court and thinking, right, get back home, watch the news. And then they just not mention it. Why do you think it is? I don't know. Having a clue. Um, As in stuff you were like, well, great that that's going to be out because people yep. will know this. Yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. And it wasn't mentioned. So I'm going to mention it in the book. And people. You got a title for the book? Well, no. No title yet. We, we had to try to come up with an idea. I had no idea. No idea. You said something there a minute ago. If I had no luck, what did you say? Something I said like if bad you didn't luck? laugh, you'd cry. Didn't laugh or cry. That could be a good title. It's too long. Is what it? about <laughs> Tiger's Bay King? Tiger King? Oh. Tiger King? Yeah, that'd be good. Well, that's probably, they've trademarked that probably. Tiger King. Lion King? That's taken two. Yeah. Leopard King? Doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> um, it doesn't, you've no link to that, but. No. That uh, could work. I don't know. We'll, have, we'll come up with that. Don't worry. Yeah. But the book, I think, is going to be very good. It's written by a guy called Paul Gibson. I know Paul. Yeah. Great guy, and he done Eamon McGee's book, won a William Hill Sports Book of the Year and stuff, and he's very, very good. Will you? Are you someone that you happy for him to? I imagine say say you're writing your own book, right? You you could be very on top of it and go. I know I said that, but don't put that in. Or are you very much like right, no, do what you want? No, with it? no, no, no. I'm like I'm like that. He so there's been a few things we we talk. He lives in Spain, so we do a lot of it on phone. Yeah. Um and 
there's been a few things where he's got written names wrong or whatever. So they've all obviously had to be changed. But there's a few stories that I'm like, uh 50-50, huh? You know, I because I think if I didn't have kids, I'd be happy with them to go in. But my wee girl's, wee girl loves reading now. She's 11. She's always reading books. And I imagine she'll want to read this book. I'm like, ah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I want her to know that. Yeah. I mean, it's totally valid thing. Like, but, yeah. but then, you know, if she then reads it 10 tell, years after. Well, that, but tell me this. So there's a guy, there's a guy, there's a story that's got in the book. And this guy doesn't want his name mentioned in the book or anywhere else. But he, um, after I fought Santa Cruz in New York, the day after we went to the bar, Annie Moore's and everyone got steaming. And then I was getting, I was really drunk. So my mates got me offside before I'd done something stupid. And we went to this uh, hotel where a f- couple of my friends were staying. In the rooftop bar, and I got more steaming. And they put me to bed. So the couple that were staying in this hotel, they were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. But on Brooklyn Bridge that night, he proposed to her. So fiancés now, they're coming back to the room to, you know, do what you do when you've just proposed to your missus. And there'd been a big person, big guy, that's all I'll say about him, who got put to bed beside me to kind of keep an eye on me because it was really in a bad way. And he pissed the bed. <laughs> so he pissed all up my back and all on himself. Right. And... So i just beaten Santa Cruz. <laughs> so I thought, like, this is a great story. You know, they, so they come back in, the fiancé, they want to do the stuff in their beds covered in this big lot Why were you piss. in their bed? I was in their bed because we were in their hotel and they just wanted, they wanted me, I was just falling around and stuff. So they were like, right, he needs to go to bed. Right, right, right. Put me in the bed and the big lot. Are was, they well known? No. Right. He's, he's well enough known, right? Mm-hmm. This guy. Does he do the same sort of thing you do? No, right. he's, I don't want, I'd say yes, I'll give a wee hint, but without giving it away, his dad's better known than him. Brooklyn Beckham. <laughs> Brooklyn Bridge, I see what you did. <laughs> but you did. anyway, so okay. he, he's pissed himself and he's realised this because he got out and then he hung his shorts over the fucking, the shower door. Right. And yeah, he's, he's pissed all over me right and i thought that's a great story for the book yeah i don't think there's anything bad in that but he he worries that because his dad is well known my dad will be brought into this and i i think he's i think he's really worried that his wife is going to find out that he pissed the bed beside me we all pissed the bed yeah 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 or did like not for ages but like i didn't talk about nine that's a different story, but yeah, I think that's fine. Do you like a do you a, do you wet the bed late? Like you no know way, kids stop. My Half kids, 12. no, but my my kids stopped at whatever three or four. They're better, better people better than me. Than me as yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I don't was, think I was nine, but I think there was a few incidents where I was like, no, it's sweat. You well, know? D- well, do you ever see you know Forrest Gump where yeah. he meets the kid for the first time and he asks Jenny, he's like, is he is he smart or is he like me? Yeah. I had this feeling like my kids were going to be wet the beds like me. Yeah, no, I think, I think I did it like a wee bit, a wee bit too late. But oh, then I, I sorted did, I it. Did. Like I think I was. I, here's how I knew I was too old. I was watching the Holly Hollyoaks Omnibus on a Sunday. That's how you know it's a problem. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I, yeah, um, my I son's an, still doing it, but he's one and a half. You know? I I had an incident in. Um, I'm I'm fucking telling them piss stories. So if there's no piss stories going in. I'm not going to tell you, but. I was a bad weather I? I was a, I was a bad man. Why are you not going to tell me? Just because I want people to read it in the, in the book. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to give a ring away here. Right. Loads of pissy stories. What's the maddest fan interaction you've ever had? Um, maddest, I don't know. Anything freaked you out? There's a, there was a guy I met at, there was a guy I met at, he was doing security in Argos at Sprucefield. <laughs> What's funny about that? That's not the funny bit. I thought you were going to say, like, at the MGM or something. Oh, no. Or like, you know, <laughs> in New York. I do private security. Oh, who do you do that for? Anyone who comes in Argos. So, well, this guy who was doing security <laughs> at Argos, English guy, and he's speaking to me. Um, and this was only a few years ago. Were you in Argos for this conversation? I was walking past to go to Sainsbury's. 
Um, so nothing wrong with Argos. I would go to Argos. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not saying there is. Is there an Argos in Hollywood? No. There's one Hollywood Exchange, but that's technically not Hollywood. Right, okay. Well, so I met this guy, English guy, and he says, oh, "I come over to see your fight on a on a weekend." Um, Kiko Martinez fight, uh, and down at the Titanic for the world title. Big boxing fan and stuff, and I'm still here. I like, why? What do you mean you're still here? It was like three years after the fight, and well, you know, I met a bird and got her up the spout, and <laughs> now I'm a daddy to an old Irish kid, and he was like a Geordie or something. So that was a, that was a mad story. It was a good story. I like that story. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he um he got the leg over on a one night stand and. <laughs> Nice here forever. <laughs> Stop <laughs> now he's just stopping people stealing those wee pens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about like What DM? do you need security in Argos for? Cause the catalogues, mate. Uh, what are you stealing? Nothing's out in the shop. Catalogues, all... bonfire, filler. Oh, you I know. suppose, yeah. Uh I don't really know if no the show the catalogues are attached to the thing because everyone kept nicking them. I didn't know that. But yeah, the pens and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Argos is not isn't gonna get robbed like. No. I don't think he was doing security at Argos. I think he was just standing outside it. Maybe. All right, may I work here? <laughs> no one, you know, they don't. <laughs> but like, if I imagine you get quite, not intense fan interaction, but, you know, boxing is that thing where like, if you follow a football, if you're a passionate fan of a football team, mm. you're following a, a club, a team, and a load of players. It, it's quite a broad thing. Whereas, if someone is a massive fan of you as an individual, mm. it's way more like focused. Yeah. So, you know, I can imagine like a lot of people, like we, when you were flying home from Vegas, I was on the same flight and uh, I was shooting like a wee video for BBC that day. And you remember the guy sitting beside me? Is that what you're going to talk about? No, I'll oh, go on, tell your story. Well, I was going to say, I saw so many people come up to you. I, I, I was filming this thing for BBC. I'd already shot it, but I was thinking, well, Flip, if you're, and you know, you haven't won the fight, so then there's part of me being like, even if you'd won, do you really want to fucking be bothered? Do, how many times can you say, can you be interviewed after yeah. it? So I, I was like, nah, I won't. I'll just keep my distance. And uh, I saw about 50 people come up, the handshake, near hugging you. People you definitely didn't know. Yeah. You know, Carl and Hong. It's, it's, it's intense. People are so passionate ab yeah. about you. So I just remember seeing that and being like, nah, it's probably a good time to just not. Yeah, nah, there was there was plenty of interactions like that. And people people were good to me, though, and they supported me. So yeah. it was never going to be a dickhead. And but it never, even like after the, the day after the fight, we all went to the bar, you know, where you were buying everybody a pint and, mm. and having like a thank you all for coming sort of thing. And I don't think that atmosphere, in a way, would have been much different if, if you no, had it was one. Good, good atmosphere, wasn't it? Because there was no, like, there was literally nobody going fuck's sake, come over to Vegas and he didn't win the fight. It was, I know. we've come over to support him and yeah. it didn't go his way, but we've had a great time and we'll be at the next fight. You know, yeah. I, I think that that's quite rare. Yeah. I don't think all boxers would no, get I was, that. I, I was really well supported. That's probably my, one of my biggest achievements is the support and the fan base. Like they're really vocal and really loyal and used to, I think it was, in New York, it was about 2000, went to New York for the first Santa Cruz fight. I think they guessed around four or five for Vegas. Yeah. It's just it's a lot of people. It was in January as well. It's a lot of people. That would be a lot of if someone said you'd start a fight. That's a lot of people to come to, a, to come to a local fight. Yeah, yeah. If five thousand people are going to come and see you in I Belfast, know. that's a lot. It was mental. And was Windsor everything that you hoped it would be? Yeah, but I I, I wanted the fight there. Um, and people been misquoted to say that that was a boy who dreamed the fight there. It wasn't because I just didn't think it would ever. There's no chance of me fighting in Windsor Park. Until I started to get the fan base and fill out the Odyssey and then the big crowds going to Vegas and everywhere else. Um, and then it became a bit of a, a goal and ambition of mine. But the only the only thing that I would have liked for Windsor is to have been a real title. It was a WBO interim title. Yeah. People call them world titles, but I, it's not a world title. So I'm not going to say I'm a world champion for beating Luke Jackson, uh, WBO interim fucking title belt. Just a governing body looking at a sanctioning fee, really, that's what it is. But um if it had if it had been a proper world title, that would have that would have been the icing on the cake. Do you take events in, like the scale of it at the time, or do you do it on a bit of a delay? What I mean is if I 
sometimes if I do a show like doing the SSE for the first time mm. on the night uh, when I come off stage I'm just cool as a cucumber and just want to have a cup of tea or a drink and then and go home watch match of the day and then about three days later I always go fuck yeah, I was unreal. Yeah, no, I do. I think it's yeah. Afterwards, you reflect a bit more, and yeah. I always, what I always do is, well, I used to um, go onto YouTube and look for fans' views of in the crowd, the singing and stuff. I always loved, I always loved that YouTube and Twitter and social yeah, media. Yeah, I suppose it's like seeing Instagram stories. Yeah, yeah, just a yeah. sing song. I, I, I love that because your fans are, it's like foot, it's this football fans get a bad rap, but every sport I'm sure there's fans that you know go too far yeah. and stuff like that but in terms of atmosphere and passion football matches are Absolutely. nothing's comparable Yeah. but people bring that to your fight so I remember in, at that Santa Cruz fight like neutrals and Santa Cruz fans looking around and going what the fuck is yeah, this? Yeah. what is you know they're they're still cheering him Yeah. but when he does something good they're cheering him Yeah. and the rest are just sitting watching the fight yeah. whereas boys are just uh, that I think you know, because I was such a big Northern Ireland supporter, and I think if you're a Northern Ireland football fan, most of them supported me anyway. Yeah. And I'm not saying they all went to Vegas and stuff, but a lot of them did. So I was always confident at Windsor, even though it was against Luke Jackson, um, who's not a household name, that I could fill it. Because I, I had in my head, well, if you come to the Northern Ireland matches, the stadium's filled all the time, you'll want a ticket to this as well, I think plus the boxing fans, plus people who wouldn't go to Northern Ireland matches. You know, I'd have support from both sides of the community and stuff. And that was, I, I always was confident that we could do well at Windsor Park, even though there wasn't there yeah. wasn't the, the big name to dance with. Oh, football fans with. definitely are fans, because I remember playing against a football team from maybe Rathcool direction. Mm. When I was playing for Hollywood, and we were, you know, in the changing room, just about to head out, and you were fighting that night it was before Vegas, before New York. It was. It might have been. Might have been Odyssey, or what? Maybe it was one of the first ones away. But anyway, we're leaving the change room, and before you leave the change room for a football match, a few people right lads, let's go here, and you know everyone applaud quickly, and then you walk out, and we walk past their dressing room as they were doing that, and they they did that, and then some fellow went, "Man, that jackal!" <laughs> and they all went nuts, and it's like that's not that's a different sport. <laughs> <laughs> he's fighting in eight hours but they yeah. and they, they beat us so like you spurred them on the win against very good the Hollywood and <laughs> one do, you, do you still play football yeah. like for who do you play for Dundrum United mate I imagine you'd be a target like trying to get people trying to kick you no nah not not as much as you think definitely like good bit of banter mm. but no one nah nah no one's done that obviously like on the sideline you'll get a wee bit of a wee bit of shit here and there but it's what, what, like, like what good nature she ain't uh, you're not even funny you yeah you? yeah yeah like uh <laughs> well well not that so you personal but uh <laughs> but more like uh more like um keith cruz type quotes oh, and stuff uh, like that and where's bunter always uh, get that i and my stock reply to that and i fucking love it it's not it's not even that good i go, I go where's bunter i go he's coming on the second half here that, that's enough to keep him uh, quiet uh, five yeah. minutes but like, you get it sometimes but 99 percent of people are or sound. I was asked to play for uh Carrie Duff fourth team. Right. <laughs> who are actually all right. So yeah. they're they're over over thirty over thirty five. Really? That's what I'll be doing that next season. So um I think they're fourth team, the over thirty five guys. There's a few ex Irish league players and all and they, they reckon they could beat Carrie Duff's second team. Right. Who are all a bit younger. So I was asked to play for them, but I just feel like I'd, people try and kick me. I don't think it would. I think they would. Well, I played a I played a charity game against like an under eighteen team, and every one of them kicked the fuck out of me. Yeah. And I thought I had a broken right foot, and my toenail <laughs> fell off my left foot. Yeah. After one one game. Yeah. I don't know. I I love it, and we'll keep. I always thought like I'll wrap it up next year. I want to take, you know, make sure I don't get injured for comedy and stuff mm. like that. But now everyone to just play as long as possible yeah and it's brilliant like it is such good I love crack football. Game. Love football. Those ch charity game we played and i played in loads of those i will always play in those mm. um and the over 35s is good but you know when you play with those like irish league legends and excellent so internationals it's br I, that's when that's the only time i get starstruck yeah like if we're playing jim Magilton's on the pitch or gillespie yeah i proper get like they don't do much running needed. but they just don't need to no don't need to i play with sammy mcelroy who's well into his yeah. 60s and it was at Windsor, 
uh, Jim McDonald was our big Charlie Lawson was our manager, <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> who else was playing? Paul Lehman, good few others. Why was I not invited to this game? I'm this was, yeah, it was for Belfast Lie years ago. I'm talking <sighs> seven years ago, and uh, Sammy McElroy was playing. I scored a hat trick, but Sammy McElroy was playing, and he just stood on the center circle. And didn't move within a two yard radius. But he was and the ball always came to him and he just got it and passed it off, got it and passed it. Couldn't get near That him. game at CV we played the Magilton play. Jim Magilton doing the same. Gillespie. I remember Lola, just play. Play. Yeah, Jim Magilton set me up, sure, for, for my goal. I was I was gonna bring a goal up. You have all seen the goal. Wonder goal. It was yeah. a good goal. It's a good goal. But what I, I I was just running about people were raving up, you know, I fuck he can play about because I seen that. Well my overall game was I great. think I uh Really held it up well. I thought David Jeffrey was going to sign me for Balamina after. No joke. I was hanging about. Do you know, do you know what I thought? Him. I thought you were a bit greedy. That's what I thought. You're a bit of a greedy player. Did you ever get that when you're playing? So, release the ball. I think the first half, everything was falling my way. Yeah. And I was hanging on to it a wee bit. But I in the second half, I started to pass it off more. It was actually, a, I released you actually up a line for a nice one. So, it's hard sometimes when I'm... You know, when I was feeling confident, DJ's managing them. Yeah. I might I could sign Irish League here. So I was probably trying to do a wee bit too much. But I, the, I remember the, the ex internationals obviously had a lot well, of Well, I was standing beside Barry Johnston in midfield. You were up front and I split the defence with an um you came kinda of yep. running in from the wing. Split the defence. Yep. What a Barry Johnston went, Oh, what a ball, what yep. a pass. And you at a tight angle, instead of squaring it, hit a shot, keeper saved it. I remember just thinking, greedy bastard, should have fucking squared it to someone. Yeah. And Barry Johnston says to me, yeah, that pass deserved more. Well, fuck Barry Johnston. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll do, I'll do midfield the next time we're playing. I'll, All right. I'll make sure I pass it to, to more people. <laughs> um, but I think overall, I had a great game up front, held it up well. <laughs> I'd actually been playing the day before as well, so... Legs were probably a wee bit tired, but you know, <laughs> after the match, David Jeffrey said, uh, shook his hand. I said, "Well, David," I said, "You, how's the squad looking?" A Balamina. He goes, "Ah, good, good." I said, and he goes, <laughs> "Need anyone?" He's like, "No, not really," but I still think yeah. I do a job. Irish league, probably playing for David Jeffrey. Not Irish league. I, I, you're a good player. I reckon, you know. I'm not that Lock, well, I think you'd, you'd maybe you could get into like a uh, an institute type team that's sort of level institution type thing maybe yeah. but institute, institute lock all no no I would, don't get me wrong if that think, happened think that'd be like that. a make a wish thing like I would fucking love it but no Did I better get into the team to play for Jogan nah well here and there <laughs> that made it for a semi-final recently though, folks, so don't worry about that <laughs> I've been away five weeks but I was like <laughs> quality you know? but um I think you should play for Carry Duff Force. Yeah, I might. I might start. We'll give it a go. The the only thing is, it's just hard. I'm I'm genuinely really busy and yeah. fights and stuff. So yeah. if they need me for a week, I might I might do it. But um, and anything else like just to wrap up? Is there any like, is there anything you're looking at going? I actually like to give this a go or or get into that. Um, or are you happy just do? No, I've always I've from? wanted to do. Um, we've talked about Paddy a few times in this, but he's done the MMA training. I've always wanted to like do some sort of wrestling, not like WWE, like judo or some like train like that. I always feel like that's a big, you know, you have to be a strong fucker and you'll get really strong. I'll bring you down to the dojo sometimes. You want? Yeah, why not? The North, down, the Hollywood dojo here. Yeah, is there one down there? Sure, that fellow you saw that wasn't a house coat he was wearing. I was a gay. <laughs> 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 so I'd like to do I'd like to train and get fit yeah. and do something like that not that fight or compete or anything yeah, but yeah. I like I like the thought well, it's a of different skill set too isn't it completely like, different yeah yeah but I feel like I've got the right stature to be decent at judo if I wanted to be I went to one up at Valley Leisure Centre a couple of years ago with a mate and judo I think it was judo no it was jiu jitsu that's another one I'd like to try and I was you know rolling with them they call it and I was only a beginner in the thing and a couple of times I I like did, did did the move that they were talking about and rolled someone. I was like, fuck, I'm really naturally talented at this. And then I took a step back and watched how they were doing it with each other. Mm. I went, ah, 
they're not doing that with me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They were all, they were like, oh, you got me on. And I, <laughs> I thought it was a weapon. And then I was like, ah, oh, there's a lot, there's a big difference when they're actually doing yeah. it to each other. Nah, it's so, it's very technical, isn't it? The jujitsu. I'd like yeah. to do it. I'd like to do it. Yeah. I, I remember I'd... the judo, so there's a guy called Walter McFarlane played for Crusaders. He's dead now, but he was cruise captain when they played like Liverpool in the European Cup and he done judo. He was like black belt and I'd met him a couple of times, but I'd always heard the stories that Walter McFarlane was like the hardest person I'd ever played for the cruise, even harder than Kirk Hunter, yeah. which is yeah, hard yeah. to believe, yeah. but that's what they say. And I always think, Walter McFarlane done judo, he played football, hard man. I'd like to do a bit of judo one day. Yeah. Well, look, we want to get you and Patty, whatever the discipline is, martial arts, we want to set that fight up, mm. the barrel. And I was going to say the Fat Family Man, but then I was like, I don't know if you'd be angry if I said that, and then I couldn't look in the eye when I said it. But um, but I I think that'd be that'd be a great charity. Yeah, I, I agree too. And we've got a wee bit. Of, I suppose this is helping to promote it a bit, and yeah, let's get the ball rolling. Where do you want to have it? See if you. Nah, too big. We'll play a charity match for it, and I'll pass. It's too pretty yeah. <laughs> too big. Um. You could do it like the waterfront. The Odyssey's too big, but I think we could do quite a number of tickets for that. Do also, I I haven't been, I've never been to fight in the Ulster Hall. Oh, what Ulster a Hall. what a venue for we'll boxing. We'll do Ulster Hall. Yeah, Ulster Hall. Right. I think it costs a bit though, like in terms of rent and stuff. No, I've given them enough matrix. business over the years. We'll be all right. Who will I fight in the undercard? Um, what about a, one of them blame game? Guys, oh, those are <laughs> far too old. <laughs> <laughs> not um, Tim, Tim not, I like Big Tim, really like I'll Tim. Fight Tim though. I like Tim too. Tim's very funny, his stand up is actually very good. I like Tim too, but I'll put him in a, I'll See, put him in a guilty. What do you call, what do you call the other guy? Call Murphy, oh, yeah, he's not very funny, is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm not concerned, I'm just concerned about what, it, what his martial arts skills are like, uh, but I think he's not that well, he's probably. 45 don't know something like that don't so know. a few years on you but yeah someone like him yeah we'll do that we good decent decent matchup all right let's set it up card chairs coming on the podcast when when you, the book comes out come back on and we'll go through it and yeah and we'll find out who will you tell me after who that guy that pissed yeah yeah i'll tell you class all right cheers everyone thanks for coming on the podcast <laughs>